A true nightmare scenario. A group of people on a popular festival ride, when it malfunctions, mm. it was shaking, it was tilting, even coming up off the ground at one point. It's, I'm surprised it didn't fall over backwards. This happened last week at the National Cherry Festival in Traverse City, Michigan. You even see on the bottom of your screen there a group of people watching. They run in to keep the ride from toppling over backwards. Amazingly in all this, the people on board and the people who stood on the bottom of the ride, no one was hurt. Incredible. And we now know that an investigation is underway to try to figure out exactly what went wrong that night. Okay, but as a mom, as I'm watching this, I'm thinking, well, what would I have done if like one of my girls was on that ride at the time? Sadly, you can't do much. Even those people trying to jump on board can't do a whole lot there. Here on NBC's The 10, we take one topic, a question or maybe an idea that impacts your family, and we dedicate a full 10 minutes to that topic. And tonight, it's who exactly are you trusting when you or your loved ones strap in for that night of fun on a festival ride? That is our starting point. And there are so many fairs in our area. If not in your town, then someplace nearby from the Topsfield Fair to the Big E to Newton. There's also Holliston, Situate, there's Barnstable. The list really goes on and on. And after a year and a half of being cooped up in our homes because of COVID, so many of us are excited about heading out and having some fun. And apparently getting really good at darts as you went. That eight was for eight. good, right? Eight Thank you very much. I got one of the big um, teddy bear stuffed oh, animals good. for that. Industry experts say 2021 is already shaping up to be a record year for carnivals across the country. Here's Greg Chico, president of the Outdoor Amusement Business Association. I just talked to a carnival operator. I can't remember where exactly it was, but over the 4th of July weekend in the Northeast, we had some bad weather. And they basically lost Friday and Saturday. And the Sunday and Monday were so strong, it still set a record year for ever playing at that carnival where they've been for like 20 years. Imagine that you lose half the holiday weekend and you still set the record now setting records already. But let's clarify something too, right? Because on one hand, you got amusement parks. We're talking places like Disney or Six Flags. Those are fixed in place. You go to them. And then on the other hand, you got carnivals. Those are the traveling rides that come to you or at least your town or a town nearby you. There are a lot of similarities, right? Those thrilling rides, the sugary snacks, the oversized stuffed animal prizes that JC just one hitting all those darts. But when it comes to safety, it does get a little bit complicated because amusement parks and carnivals, separate hands, they're looked at differently and depending on the state as well. So here in Massachusetts, we actually have some of the most robust regulations and oversight for those amusement park rides. Someone can't just show up, suddenly run a Ferris wheel at your local park. All of it is monitored by the state's Office of Public Safety and Inspections, also known as the OPSI. And there are several steps in place to make sure those rides are safe before a single kid steps foot on them. First of all, any person who owns or operates an amusement park ride has to apply for an annual license. That's the first step. This includes both those traveling carnivals as well as those permanent locations. Before the start of the season, every ride has to be inspected by a third party inspector and an inspection from the OPSI. And by the way, the inspectors from that office have to be certified by the National Association of Amusement Ride Safety Officials. Once a carnival is open, each ride is inspected daily, again, by a person employed by the owner of the carnival for traveling shows. A second state inspector, though, looks at the rides each day before they operate. Ch uh, Chicky argues with these frequent inspections, the carnivals that break down and move every month, those traveling carnivals, are safer than most people think. Use Massachusetts as an example, because we can cite specifically. A Massachusetts fixed park is inspected once a year and not necessarily the ride could already be assembled. So if you're taking a ride apart and putting it back together again, first of all, you have a chance to visually inspect a lot of things you wouldn't normally see. And in Massachusetts, uh, the state inspectors will inspect that ride every time that it's moved. So you could actually make an argument that the traveling shows have an opportunity to, to find deficiencies in a more efficient manner than and I don't think a lot of people realize that, too. No. When they move, they're inspected again, and they're daily inspections. So there's several layers that go into it. It's not just tossing But every time I think about it, I think about the fact the wear and tear, right? They have to break down, then they have to put it back up. And I'm thinking, well, that can't be safe, you know? But based on that, they're really actually inspecting them more. But when it comes to regulations and inspections, each state makes their own rules. And in some cases, there's no oversight. Yeah, this is where it gets a little bit wonky, right? Half a dozen states, they got no laws on the books about regulating and inspecting those amusement park rides. And across the country, there's no uniformity either. 
Amusement parks fall under a wide variety of departments, depending on which state you're in. We mentioned Massachusetts. It's under the Department of Public Safety and Inspections. That makes sense, right? right. Public safety, inspections, that all uh, goes Those together. Those apply. Yes. yes. In Delaware, though, it's the state fire marshal. Okay. Florida somehow lumped it in with the Department of Agriculture, and in Kansas, it's under the Department of Labor. Okay, in Vermont, though, it falls under the Secretary of State. It's been categorized many different ways and with different rules in each state. There's no sharing of information because every place does it differently. Here's Ken Martin, an amusement ride safety analyst who's been trying to get federal oversight so there's some consistency across the country. We have 50 states and no two states inspect anything the same way here. Uh, states do not share information from one state to another. Inspection reports that may have been done in, in Milwaukee yesterday are not going to be available in Tallahassee next week. It's insane. So across the country, it's just kind of like this hodgepodge when it comes to who's responsible for the safety of these rides. And one of the most surprising things we found when we dug into this topic is that there isn't any clear cut regulation for all of these rides at the federal level. And there hasn't been for a while. Both amusement parks and carnivals used to be monitored federally by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. But in 1981, that changed. A bill that year was passed, stripping the commission of control over permanent fixed amusement parks. And that hasn't changed in the past 40 years. So the commission currently oversees the safety of mobile carnival rides, but the impl implementation is still up to each state. Again, federal not involved. That loophole prohibits the agency from overseeing permanent rides. Things like Six Flags, Canopy Lake Park in New Hampshire, we've all been there. There's an international standards organization that sets the guidelines for rides, but that group is mostly filled with people within the industry who are essentially setting guidelines for themselves. The amusement ride industry is, uh, uh, and their own standards are like the case of the fox guarding the hen house. The system we have now is not working. It's just plain and simple not working. So Ken's been to Capitol Hill, and one of the loudest voices in Washington to change that has been Senator Ed Markey, right here from Massachusetts. Senator Markey has long fought to close that safety loophole and implement some more safety protocols for amusement parks nationwide. His fights date back to 2001, when he first introduced legislation to reinstate federal authority that went away in 1981. A couple of years later, in 03, he sponsored the National Amusement Park Ride Safety Act, this looked to extend a definition of consumer product to include amusement park rides so they'd be covered by the commission's jurisdiction. This way they could track it and the data would all be in one place so it could be shared all across the country. He's renewed his push several times in the nearly 22 years since he started. He's spoken out for stricter safety measures following almost every nationwide injury or death because of a ride. And there have been a lot of safety incidents when it comes to rides across the country. According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, each year there were about 34,700 injuries from amusement attractions in the U.S. between 2017 and 2019. It's difficult to compare numbers from last year, of course, because so many carnivals were shut down from COVID. Since 2016, the commission says there have been 17 deaths associated with amusement attractions. Now, we know there haven't been uh, deadly incidents here in Massachusetts in more than 15 years, but that's because rules were tightened here in the Bay State after a couple of deadly incidents in the early 2000s. Back in September of 2004, a 38-year-old man died after being thrown from a ride in Shrewsbury. He was a resident of a facility for people living with developmental disabilities. Two other residents from that facility who were also on the ride were injured that day. State public safety officials blamed that accident on some loose bolts on the seat where that man was sitting. And two years after the incident, a carnival ride maintenance worker actually pleaded guilty for manslaughter after prosecutors say he failed to fix that mechanical issue. Now, listen, we've mentioned how often these rides are inspected, at least here in Massachusetts. Can't speak on behalf of Utah. They do essentially nothing. And, of course, if it passes inspection, all's good, right? Nothing's changes. Everyone can hop on board that afternoon, that night. But what happens if one of those inspections reveals a problem? Well, at least here in Massachusetts, if a ride does not pass inspection, it is taken out of operation until that problem is fixed. Typically, that means a replacement part likely needed to fix the problem. And repair devices are then reinspected before they're allowed to be put back in use. And if that inspector finds that the part is still not fixed properly, the ride could actually be pulled from service long term. 
And you're probably wondering, though, because we mentioned the daily inspections, right, if there's a conflict of interest, considering it's someone who's employed by the carnival doing those daily inspections, they'd surely want that ride to operate no matter what's going on, otherwise they'd lose money. But we spoke to Ed Hodgson, the Northeast Association Amusement Parks and Attractions, and he says that's not the case for people in that industry. We have a vested interest in making sure that this industry is safe and operates safely or else we're all out of a job. And it does make sense, right? I talked to these guys and obviously they were defending the business and the industry as a whole because I said, well, money should right. in a lot of ways supersede anything. But they said if rides don't work, if there are incidents like we saw in Michigan, they don't make money. Yeah, but they're policing themselves. So there, there's a catch 22 there. The good news in all of this, Massachusetts, one of the best in the entire country when it comes to those inspections and the oversight can't speak on behalf of some of those other states. I mentioned right. Utah, but Massachusetts ahead of the pack on many things, including inspection. Makes of me those feel a little bit lines. better because my kids were on the yo-yo the other day and I was, you know, coming up on the 10, helping canine officers injured in the line of duty. We'll tell you about the renewed push to protect these police dogs. Plus, Alzheimer's disease affects millions of Americans, but a new drug is hitting a snag. Why some insurance companies say they won't cover it. Pete, over to you. JC, watching severe weather across central Mass. Where does this go tonight? What about more storms into the evening? And we'll also talk about summer coming back ahead.